In this video, we'll discuss the difference between what is the rentable area and the usable area. And we're gonna learn how to calculate these areas in a simple office building example, as you see here on the screen. There are, of course, many different standards, including BOMA, which is the Building Owners and Managers Association, and of course, ANSI, American National Standards Institute, and IFMA, or the International Facility Management Association, for deriving the rentable areas and usable areas. Whatever standard is being used, it's good to understand how building owners classify square footage in order to select or even design, if you're an architect, the right space for a client. In this video, we'll stick to the BOMA standards. Let's dive right in. Here's an office building where the building owner bases rents on the sum of two types of areas. We're looking at this office building. There are two different suites here. There is suite A in this sort of lime green area, and then there's suite B in this turquoise area. We also have highlighted common areas in orange and yellow as vertical penetrations, but we'll get to those later in this video. For now, let's just concentrate on the two different suites and the usable area. Let's go ahead and write our first term here called usable area. If I were a tenant leasing suite A and I had a law firm, for example, then anything within the boundaries of that lime green area in suite A would be my usable area. That means all of my employees, all of the storage, any other areas that are specific to, and I should say exclusive to, what my firm would use on a daily basis would be the usable area. Same thing with suite B. If I were another tenant, let's say I'm an accounting firm and I were renting that area within the turquoise region, suite B, all of that is considered suite B's usable area. We'll go ahead and write uh, a basic definition for usable area, which is the area or areas used, the key term here is exclusively by the tenants. Usable areas for multi-tenant suites on the same floor are measured with three general guidelines. How do we actually measure this usable area? Suite A has three distinct edges, and I'll, I'll show you what those edges are to be able to calculate the usable area. The first edge is gonna be your outermost building edge. That's your exterior wall, or the most exterior wall of the building. Now, it's really important to know how to treat this exterior edge and how to measure up to it, because you can either include the walls or not include the walls, but how you proceed with that calculation really matters. So we wanna make sure that we're accurate. According to BOMA, if the usable area edge is the exterior wall of the building, which it is here in this case, is our first example, then we would measure to the inside face of the finished surface, whether it's a glazing or a wall, whichever face is 50% or more of that surface. So if this red line that I've drawn for the exterior wall of this building is all glass, then we would just measure to the inside finish face of that glass. If it's a wall, then we would measure to the inside face of that wall. If it's a combination of glazing and wall, for any wall portion, you would measure and kind of calculate and see which has 50% or more of that surface area. And if it is the wall, then you would use the wall. If it's the glazing, then you would measure to the inside face of the glazing. Here, we'll simplify the example and just say that that entire red edge perimeter is actually glazing. So if I were to just kind of zoom in here, I'll show you that we're gonna measure to this, to the inner edge of that wall or that glazing, I should say. We're gonna measure to that inner edge. So. If I were to draw a line, it would be that inner edge along the entire perimeter from the top all the way to the bottom right here. And then of course, this entire edge, not gonna draw the whole thing out. 
Here's a second condition. If the usable area edge is along a common area used by multiple tenants, then the edge is measured to the inside face of that finish surface, whether it's a wall or glass on the tenant's side. So what do we mean here? Here is suite A, as we said, in that lime green area. That is completely and totally the usable area of that tenant in suite A. In orange, however, we're showing the common area corridors that are used to actually access the tenant suite. And as you notice, this common orange area is used to access multiple different suites, right? What this says in the second condition is that if I'm a tenant in suite A, then my usable area gets measured to the inside face of this partition. So we're gonna measure on the inside face of that all along this perimeter. And finally, the third guideline here is if the usable area edge is along a demising partition with another tenant on the other side, then we measure to the center of that demising partition. So we have a great example here. We have two different suites, suite A and B. We have a demising partition right here, right? And this just says that our usable area would in fact be measured as, if I'm in suite A, it would be measured the center line of that demising wall or partition on that side. And same here, the center line. I know it's very hard to see, but I'm just drawing diagrammatically for you to kind of get a sense of where that would take place. So center line of the demising wall for suite A and B. So we've just gone over three guidelines as far as how we would measure that usable area. These are general guidelines, definitely consult the latest BOMA and ANSI standards. We understand what a usable area is now, but let's talk about the second area a building owner will consider when it comes to tenants leasing their spaces. The second area that I wanna talk about is called the common area. These are areas of a building that are used by all the tenants of that floor, whether it's multiple tenants or a single tenant on a floor. And it includes common corridors, which I'm showing here in orange. It also includes restrooms, which are also shown here in orange. And elevator lobbies. This is an elevator lobby right here as well as any mechanical rooms, janitor closets, telephone closets, which are these other rooms I've depicted right here. Notice that any vertical shafts, such as fire stairs, elevator shafts, plumbing and ductwork shafts are not counted in the common areas. And in fact, in this diagram here, all vertical penetrations, we're calling them vertical penetrations for fire stairs. Here's a fire stair, as well as elevator shafts. These are elevator shafts and any other ductwork areas or mechanical plumbing areas, these are all part of vertical penetrations. Just know that the vertical penetrations are not part of the common areas. At this point, if the building owner adds up all the usable area square footages to the total common area square footage, they would get that rentable area or the rentable square footage. Let's break it down. Let's begin with suite A, which has a total usable square footage or usable area of 6,000 square feet. Suite B has a total of 4,501 square feet. We can actually say USF, usable square feet or square feet. Now, if you were to just add the total square footage of suites A and B, we would get 10,501 usable square feet for the usable area. So in this building, on this floor, the usable area is 10,501 USF. Let's talk about common areas. Let's say the common area has a total square footage, we'll just say common, of 1,384 square feet. And then let's say for vertical penetrations, which I'll just abbreviate to VP, is 680 SF. So what's our total rentable area? Our total rentable area is the usable area plus the common area. We would not use the vertical penetration area. So that's simple math. We would just take 10,501 
usable square feet plus 1,384 usable square feet to get, we'll continue that right here since we're running out of space, that's 11,885 rentable square feet. The building owner now has both the rentable square footage and the usable square footage. To summarize the usable square footage we derived was 10,501 and the rentable square footage which included the usable and the common areas equals 11,885. The final step, if you were the building owner, the final step that you would take would be to derive a load factor or the rentable to usable ratio. So let's go ahead and write that. I'm gonna write the load factor which is the rentable divided by the usable area. And in this case, we'll just go ahead and divide that. It's the 11,885 divided by 10,501 square feet. And we get a load factor of 1.13. What does that mean? 1.13 means that if I want to rent out just suite A, the building owner will multiply this load factor number 1.13 by the square footage of suite A, which we said was 6,000 square feet, and get the actual rentable square footage of that space, which would be 6,780 rentable square feet. In fact, you can do that for the other suite as well, for suite B. If we take 1.13 and multiply it by the square footage or the usable area square footage, remember here we have B4501, so 1.13 multiplied by 4,501 square feet equals 5,086 rentable square feet. And Remember, if you just add this number and this number, you'll get the total rentable square footage again. So just make sure that all the numbers add up to that total rentable square footage. Now you've realized that if you are a tenant and you're looking for a space that is actually 6,000 square feet and you've found it, you realize after talking to the building owner of that building that you're not actually just paying for 6,000 square feet, but you're actually paying for 6,780 rentable square feet because there are common shared spaces that every tenant on that floor will be using. And part of that will be added on to your square footage as a load factor. And we learned how to calculate that load factor, which is simply the ratio of the rentable area divided by the usable area. Okay, so now that we've learned the difference between usable space and rentable space, which depends on whether it's exclusively used by the tenants and whether it's classified as a common area, we realize that the rentable area will take precedence always over the actual amount of square footage of a tenant's space, rather than that usable square footage being used for everyday activities. As always, thanks for watching. If you found any value in this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and See you in the next video.